So designing a monogram should be easy, right? Because all you're doing is combining two or three letters into one design. That's why it's called monogram, one mark. Um, but as you may have found out, it's not that easy. Um, you're trying to look for similarities in your letters. And if you're like me, you don't have letters that are very similar at all. I have a curved letter and a very straight letter. So what I do is um, start looking at typefaces. It's good to actually start sketching out ideas so you don't feel limited by the typefaces that you have on your computer. But for this exercise, I'm just going to show you a quick way um, to create a monogram. So I look at different typefaces in my computer, in my system. This is Pottery Barn. This is Cubics. Um, and you'll see as I go through here, the letters still don't have much similarity, except for Cubics, but I don't really want to go that. Um, mechanical looking. So then I even try some lowercase letters and see if there's anything that I can find that will spark an idea. Lowercase letters, still not really doing it for me. Um, this is getting a little closer. This is Eurostyle condensed and this has a whole family in it. Condensed, bold, condensed, oblique, etc. So I want something sort of wide. So I'm looking at this one, extended too. Um, but I really wish that the L had a smooth corner like the S, so I might come back to that one. This one is really um, fancy looking. It's a little bit too fancy for what I want. And this one might be nice, but for now I'm going to focus on this one. So I'm going to show you two ways to make this L have a curved corner. A couple ways. I'll show you the uh, hard way first. So I copy this, move over to the side and paste it. And I'm going to make outlines of this one and then ungroup it. So object, ungroup. Okay, so I'm using my Pathfinder tool, which we've looked at before, and I'm going to cut off this corner right here. I want to make sure I get enough of it so I have a nice straight bottom so I can connect it with the straight bottom of the L. If I go like this, I might have a hard time connecting the curve to the straight line. So I'm going to draw that again to about here. Then I take these two shapes, the S and the box, use my Pathfinder tool, divide, go to my direct selection tool, delete the black part, and this is the piece I want. So I'm going to scoot that over to my L and I'm just using my arrows on the keyboard to scoot it over because I had problems moving it in a previous video. And I move it somewhat like that. And I can't really see what's going on, so I'm going to click on View Outline. And I'll zoom in on this area here. Okay, so this matches up pretty well, but this doesn't, so we're going to fix this later. But what I want to do is cut apart the L and the curve and then connect them. Um, hopefully you'll get what I mean. Using my scissor tool, click on the eraser and hold, select scissors. I'm going to select just this curve here. Click on that and click on that. Okay, direct selection tool, deselect by just clicking on the white and then click on this horizontal line and delete a couple times. Okay, so now it's a nice open stroke. I'm going to do the same for this side. So I select it first, go to my scissors tool, click here, and there. Direct selection, delete a couple times. So now I have two open curved lines. I'm going to do the same thing for the L, but the curve is sort of in the way. So I select the curve here and I'm going to lock it. So object, lock selection. Now I can cut apart my L without having to worry about mistakenly cutting the curve. Scissor tool, cut it somewhere around here and cut it somewhere around here. And then on this side, cut it here and here. Whoops, sort of missed it. Cut it right there. Okay, 
direct selection, grab this corner, delete a couple times, grab this corner, delete a couple times. Let me zoom out so you can see what I'm trying to do. Okay, so I'm trying to make this curved like the S. Okay, so now we see that this isn't quite lined up, so we need to just adjust it a little bit. So I'm going to select this curved line. Oh, that's right, we locked it. So object, unlock all. Okay, now we can select it. I'm holding down my option key or alt so that even though I'm in this tool, the direct selection, I can select the whole thing. And then I'm just going to scoot it over and try to line it up the best as I can. Okay, then if I select this area, I'm actually selecting a point from the straight L and a point from that curved line. And I want to combine them. So I go to Object, Path, Average, and then make sure that both is selected and say OK. OK, so did you see that it moved? So now it's one point. And you go back to Object, Path, Join. Oh, it's not open yet. So I'm just going to grab this whole thing. And I have to ungroup it because it's probably part of another group and see if that'll do it. There we go, that did it. Okay, now do you see there's two points here? So from the straight L and the curve, do the same thing. Object, path, average, both, okay. And then object, path, join. This is sort of a quick sloppy way. Um, if you're doing it for real, you would take, some more, take more time to make sure it's perfect. Okay, so these two points, same thing. Object, path, average, both. Okay. And then object, path, join. Okay, this one, I don't really want to average it because then it'll probably make this line angled. So what I'll do is grab this area here and just scoot that down till it's closer. Now I can grab these two points. Object, path, average, both, okay. Object, path, join. Okay, then when I zoom out, my L is complete. Then I can grab this and straighten it up again. Straighten it out. And then looking at the design, maybe I want my S to connect to the L. So I'm going to use my Pathfinder tool again to cut this off. Grab the S and the shape, Pathfinder divide, and it blinked. Use my direct selection tool. Delete a couple times. Grab I only need two points. And scoot it way over here. Looks pretty weird, but it's a start. Then I want to make sure that these line up on the top, so I would probably grab these two, and this time I'm going to use align. And in class I showed you how to align to the artboard, how to center something on in the middle of the page. This time I, I want to align to selection because I have two objects and I want to align them to them to each other, not to the artboard page necessarily. So with both of them, I just click on align to selection and then click on this one, line it up to the top. So it moved up, but now they're not lined up on the bottom. So then I can just use my guides like that. And then direct selection tool, grab all this, and just scoot that down. Something like that. Um, to see what it looks like, view, preview, looks pretty weird. 
but it gives you an idea of what to do. So that's one way, that's the harder way. The easier way would be to take these same initials and you want to try to think, okay, what other letter has a curve or might have a curve? So my L is straight and it doesn't look good with the S. How about an O? Okay, so the O already has a curve and has a nice straight stroke here and a nice straight, straight stroke there. So I could use the pen tool or a couple of triangles and just cut apart the part of the O that I don't want. Okay, and then, so then I would use my Pathfinder, cut that apart, and then take these two points and extend it up so it matches to the top of the S or lines to the top. And then I could take these two and then move it out this way. Okay, so that's a quick idea. And let's see. Remember we started out with all these different typefaces, did a search, just went for different fields, and then here's sort of what it looks like at the end. I added um, some different layers, some shadows. So it gives you an idea of what you can do when you combine letters to make a monogram. Thanks for watching.